really funny when game developers sort of get caught with their hand in the cookie jar of stupid decisions and fan reaction and Twitter blow ups and stuff. And when they have to sort of make a rebuttal to it, how the rebuttal just makes it seem like it's way worse. So if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, there's a video that's going to be above my head. It talks about a chain and with the show 21 mate, and I play it a lot. It's all over the channel for the most part where I wanted to do when I started this whole thing. But recently they decided to make a small little change that royally pissed everybody off. That was kind of shot the entire no money spent thing square in the foot. And the way the game has been handled this year has really just made everything a giant mess. But apparently they responded over on, I'm, it was in game notes apparently for the subreddit post in the end with the show Reddit. So I'm going to go over it and just, we're just going to talk about it. It's a little bit of a mess. And I, I, I feel like they kind of got caught with the hand in the cookie jar based on wording and stuff. But um, you can be the judge and maybe they are telling the, the truth of it all. I, I, I couldn't tell you. Let, let me just, let's just go. So my fat head's going to block out part of it. But. Um, I'll leave a link down below in the pinned comment for the actual thing. It, it It's from Game 7 Update Notes. It's from four days ago. I was recording this. So take it for what it's worth. Um, <laughs> I'll give my thoughts after I read this, but I think it's just funny. So uh, developer insight. Explanation of changes to rank season and battle royale program rewards from Game Update 7 Notes. Developer inside, you know, same thing, explanation of rank season and battle reward programs. We've seen a lot of discussion regarding the implementation of non-solvable program rewards in the rank seasons and battle reward uh, reward paths. We wanted to take opportunity to provide some clarity and insight into our decisions. This area has been a topic of internal discussion for a long time and was not a spur of the moment decision. Question then. And if everyone says what is essentially true, that someone in this team peruses YouTube and Twitch for stuff, then I got, then I want to ask one question. Why was, why did you wait for game update seven for this? If that was the case, that this was an ongoing discussion. That doesn't seem like you're waiting for game seven. G game update number seven to implement a change like this. That's usually something you would start off with. Not like that's like a, a update one <laughs> day one patch. You know, the, the, the one that fixes like bugs that we wouldn't catch. Like that's not a game seven update. It feels weird for that. And you can say like in the first paragraph where it's like, this was been a topic of internal discussion for a long time. That program has been out for two years. And in the two years, the only thing that's a, that it's really accomplished is that it's lessened the backlog of buy orders because I remember in 20 when Shipper Jones was a BR, Signature Shipper Jones, Signature Series Shipper Jones was a BR reward. And they had buy orders out the ass for million dollar stubs. And all that people were doing were hoping and praying that someone went 12 and 0 and sold it to them and that they were the next person up in line. I think there were like it maxed out on buy orders for him. That's how hard BR is. Now, realistically, the argument could be made that, hey, if you really want this, why do you want to sell it anyway? Which is a fair argument. But like I said, that last sentence to me makes no sense. And also when this thing came out, which was update seven at this point, two months into the same cycle. But I digress. Let's move on. Maybe they clarified a little better. When the BR program was first implemented, the goal of the program was to ensure that no matter your skill level, you would not be gated from flawless rewards. Our design was intent, intent to... Their design intent was to provide an avenue for players who could not go 12 and 0 still be able to enjoy some of the rewards in the program. We feel that has been successful in that regard. That is true. Um, for the most part, I, I would say like if you're averaging about six wins, six and one, six and two, you're probably going to get it done. It might take a little bit longer, but there, there's other stuff in there that is very, very useful. They're all core cards. So realistically in that regard, yeah, that was a huge dub, huge dub, big one for them. Over time, these programs become less and less about having access to the program rewards or more about selling the program rewards for stubs and uses in other areas of the game. 
From our perspective, this was never our intent for the program awards to immediately be discarded. We felt it goes against our original goal stated above. Players are no longer using the program as means of acquiring program players. And in that regard, the program are not in that regard, the programs are not serving the purpose to strive for. Okay. <laughs> That part right there flabbergasts me. And this is why it flabbergasts me. Is basically what they're trying to say is, is we feel like people were circumventing the 12 and 0 thing. Because we want you to earn it. Now, realistically, I, I mentioned this prior and I mentioned it in a comment in my last video talking about the no sell issue at large when it first came out. And in the comment, I mean, the, I, I stated that if you look at it from the perspective of like a mobile game, and I always use this example, I play Dokkan a lot. I've been playing it for all, the entire day. I think I, I think it was I started in year two, and we're on like going into year eight, so six years. And a lot of these gotcha games have what's called a pity system. And what the pity system is is you spend enough money, you play it enough, you eventually get something because y you pissed away enough, right? You pissed away enough money, you pissed away enough summons that you can finally get to some regard and generally it's one copy of it and you can kind of basically trial run it it takes a little bit of time to acquire whether it's the in-game you know in-game currency or whatever to try it now looking at it from that perspective of hey this is basically a pity system which they're kind of saying it is then okay, we're going to treat this card differently, okay? They want to treat it differently in the sense of, well, we want to separate the ones who earned it and the ones who earned it. Again, very weird, but I get what they're trying to go with. It's just like, you waited to update seven for this? After these changes, any play players of any skill were able to grind the programs, receive the rewards from that program, even if they aren't able to 12 and 0 or make World Series and rank... That BR and ranked have also still had been sellable rewards you can earn from win streaks, thresholds, or by climbing the ranking leaderboards, including new co-op leaderboards, allow players to earn additional rank seasons rewards. Yeah, because they dumped it all together. So basically there is, if you were to play, so you have, in that regard, you can get, there's like the rank program, which is both combined, and then solo and co-op. So really you can, I think they say you can get it twice or three times. I, I, I have to look again, which is different, but th that's ranked ranked, whatever. Like I, I think season one of ranked was a little bit wonky because like you could get cards very simply by kind of exploiting the, the co-op mode, um, which is fine. I guess if they want to make one non-sellable realistically, it's like, I, you're going to pick one and probably stick with it anyway, but all right, whatever. Uh, we feel that making the reward path non-sellable, we're able to reach a middle ground between allowing our players to f always have access to the rewards in a meaningful way while balancing the modes and introducing non-sellable reward programs. We are aligning our original goals for the program with in a much stronger way than previously structured. We, st we will strive to communicate in a similar fashion when changes are implemented in the future. Remember when I said it sounded like they kind of got caught with the hand in the cookie jar? Well, it, it didn't really answer a lot of questions. The biggest question I have is why did you wait till game to a game update seven? If this is something that was essentially talked about prior to I let, let let's take a let, let's 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 guess they were talking about this since the end of last year or whatever, and they're saying like, well, prices were were aren't where we wanted to. We want these to be like the exclusive cards, but we don't want to gatekeep. Well, how do you gatekeep? How do you not gatekeep? Well, by doing this, I, I I guess. But the funny part is, and this is the part where I you sort of have to LOL, what do you, you know, LOL, la, 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 whatever. Apart from the game set, be two months in, whenever se season one ended and season two ended, which was about three weeks ago. In that regard, why didn't you do it? as soon as you could because the funny part of it is if we're looking at season one of br versus season two season one of br had no cards that were really worth anyone's time at least in the grand scheme of things because they put out um bob feller 
Eddie Matthews, and Greg Vaughn. Not exactly anyone you're, you're you're jumping through the hoops for to get, right? You're not really excited for Bob Feller, but Bob Feller always comes comes out this early. For the most part, he was the season two, uh, uh what is it, inning two a couple years ago. He always comes out early. Eddie generally is like middle. Greg Vaughn was a new legend, so makes sense that he's sort of up there first. But those cards still now are sitting around 40K. They haven't really fluctuated a lot. Season two that had Ken Griffey Jr., Jorge Posada, and I forget who the pitcher was offhand, they are still sitting around 100 and something K. And now with this new set, you're in the same thing, but now one's locked. Now I get what they're going for that, well, they're just flipping it for stubs and we don't want that to happen. But you get, but my rebuttal to that, if SDS, if, if you somehow stumble upon this, my one question to you is this. What's the difference with one guy selling a card that he's not going to use that he just got from grinding for 150k steps to go spend on a live series card? Does that inherently decrease the value of of it, of the card or the program? Or are you more so concerned about person A getting that card in an unearned fashion and selling it to get something else? Now, ultimately, I care less if everything else is no sell. If you want to throw no sells and somewhere else, that's all fine and dandy. But ultimately, going back to the original thing of why does that matter when your boss program cards at the end of the program are around 12k? So, really, what are we trying to get at here? Are we upset that that they're spending it, or that the stub count on the cards that were harder to get? We're kind of low in the first part and you want to blame the program, but realistically that program didn't do much of anything. It gave you one copy that you could only do once. And once that program's maxed out, it's done. It's over with. And yeah, you get it done once by going 12 and 0 where you get two cards. And let me tell you something. I believe that the number of people who go 12 and 0 in a given season once is probably very low. So I really don't understand what the point of this was. It really does seem like you saw the outrage on Twitter from people and it threw your creators, people you partner with into a weird order when the biggest, one of the biggest Twitch streamers is coming out against you guys and saying it makes no sense. It's a dumb decision. Stop making dumb decisions. I guess we praise you too much because it, it took you till what the last update to throw anything into a conquest map that was worth the wild. It really does seem like things are going downhill. Maybe it's just like a bump in the road because you're trying out new things and because it's seasons, people aren't are, are, are more willing to flip things than they were in the past, which is probably partially true that the new seasons thing is sort of throwing things in a whack because at, at this point, season one cards are beyond, you can only keep one and, and season three is all star cards and they're probably going to be 99. I mean, at this point, the high we've gotten one free to play card. That's a 99. That's an easy way to get it. Was a Kenley Jensen? Maybe they'll give it a Craig Kimbrough because I think he just got a 100 saves. So, really, the free to play method of grinding and playing is just getting harder and harder and harder. It's a rough spot to be in and all that. Like I said, maybe the chain, maybe the method out is they were trying to implement it, but they just weren't sure how to do it. And unfortunately, they snuck it in and it caught like it caught on like a wildfire. And it left a lot of people in a weird spot, including myself, who whose best running BR, I think, was 9-2. So, I don't know where this leaves us. Let me know what you guys think about it down below. I don't know. Maybe you guys like it. The majority of people in the last video seem to think it was a bad decision that they're skewing towards Madden. And there are plenty of people on the Reddit who are saying, you clearly don't play Madden because Madden was all geared towards facts. I hate to be the very bad news, but look at where we're going. It, we're heading in a weird direction with it and hope against hope they can fix it because if this continues, you're probably going to lose a lot of player bases going on. And I'm seeing on the Reddit where people are like, I can't do this anymore. It's too grind heavy. It, it's too much behind a paywall. It's no longer fun, which sucks. The baseball is my favorite sport. It's what I, it's what I do for a living. I really hope SDS fixes this, but we'll never know. We have a long way to go for the season. Maybe they can make a change. Maybe they redo some things so that, players can freely do the decisions they want without being told they can't. With all that being said, my name is Fex and I will see you all in the next one.